What's up everyone, the king of sci-fi here again to talk to you a little bit about AOC's deal that just crashed and burned spectacularly. Why am I talking about that deal? Well, it is by far the most sci-fi-like thing I've ever seen come out of Congress. Well, actually, it's the most sci-fi thing I've seen happen since that guy at MIT or Harvard, I forgot which one it was, actually came out with, with the actual map behind the Warp 3, which was pretty cool, but this, this beats that, hands down. This is the most sci-fi thing I've seen in a long time. The Green New Deal, actually, that's really long. I'm just gonna call it GND. Probably should have been GED. Please don't kill me, that's a joke. Last Let's move on from that. GND calls for the complete revamping of a lot of technology we have and some we don't even have yet. I'm gonna talk about the ones that are actually pretty sci-fi. First of all, completely revamping the entire power grid in order to be more energy efficient. It sounds nice and it sounds doable until you think about how big our power grid actually is and the sheer scale of enhancements you would have to do. But not just that, it's the fact that our power grid is actually pretty efficient based on our current technology. In order for a grid to be more efficient, we will need a new way of transferring power in a way to reduce heat loss all at the same time. Something I actually have an idea for, because I want to at least give this deal something that's possible-ish. My science might not be all that correct at the moment. So, revamping the entire power grid so that we can transfer power more efficiently and be able to store energy better. Well, one, instead of having transformer stations like we currently have, we can convert transformer stations into pretty much backup systems such as battery backup systems, where these transformer systems would use large scale batteries such as deep cell batteries, but on a bigger scale, this would actually allow for the power to be channel directly through the batteries, it would keep the batteries charged, it will prevent things like power surges because it will surge into the battery instead of into the electrical grid. So this would actually help the power system be more efficient because we'd lose less power through things such as transformers blowing and having those massive power grid and transformer stations that take up about the size of a building used to regulate the energy. We could get rid of those and use battery powered systems that would back up the power supply at the same time. Granted, we don't have anything currently existing that would provide a battery source that could store enough power to actually power the grid if one of the electrical, ge electrical generators actually went out. But it, it's a start. It's a good start. Tesla's working on devices that store energy in solid state to try and get rid of the lithium ion batteries that we currently use. So it's a start that we can move to that. Another thing that I actually thought of myself, completely revamp the power line system as it is now. Because currently we use conductive metals to transfer power from place to place and then into our homes. Instead of that, we could use tubes. These tubes would be semi-glass, semi-plastic tubes to prevent breakage and they'll be able to bend and so on. They can be smaller. These tubes would then be filled with water. Yes, water. And I know water is not a very good conductor of electricity unless there's something in it. And that's where the brilliant part of this comes in. Inside of the water, it's gonna be powdered metal. This system would work very efficiently because the powdered metal would actually conduct the electricity through the pipes while the water would serve as an insulator and a cooling unit to keep the pipe system from overheating while at the same time insulating into that large sparks of energy when surge out of the electrical grid into whatever is around it. Even on cases such as lightning strikes, the lightning would hit it because the outside of it is not made from a conductive material. The lightning would simply just hit the outside and wouldn't actually damage the grade. The lightning would also not be attracted to it as much because there's less metal and less electrical energy radiated from the actual lines themselves. Another thing, these lines could actually be buried safely without the worry of a storm causing electrical shortage in the buried lines. Because they already have water as the insulator, water on the outside wouldn't actually do anything to these lines. And yes, I know that sounds like some fantastical, unusual way to transfer energy, but it matches the deal. It's a completely fantastical deal so my idea matches that deal it's an actual good idea in comparison to that deal so let's move on from the electrical grid let's move on to one of the biggest and most ambitious proposals of this deal it wants to get rid of all fossil fuel powered vehicles such as planes cars trains anything that uses any form of gasoline or coal or diesel that is all fossil fuels it wants to get rid of all of that and move to electrical energy. Which, which sounds nice at first. And yes, Tesla does make some very good electrical cars that have matching power in a sense. 
But the problem lies in this. Planes are in a thing. We like planes, and people like to fly planes especially. People don't like to take boats from place to place. So sailing from one place to another takes a long time. And boats do have engines that run on diesel that actually power most of the time. So we're gonna have to get rid of all that and replace with electrical ones. Now, this will completely stop travel between continents and a lot of places actually because there's no one wants to drive 10 hours on a cramped car to get some place when they can take a half an hour flight and get there and deal with an hour in the airport on both sides. Yeah, it's still a hassle, but it's way less of a hassle to do that than it is to get in the car and drive over there, especially an electric car, which means you're stopping every 300 miles to recharge that thing for another two hours, then drive again. So that 10 hour trip will probably take you two days. So two days versus at most three hours in an airplane and the airport. I don't think anyone's choosing that. So I am proposing, well, actually not me, this steel proposed that we have trains and bullet trains, which is nice. China does use bullet trains to get around quite a bit. But there's just one problem. We currently don't have bullet trains in the United States, which means all the trains that we currently have would have to be completely revamped. But the problem lies in where train tracks are. Currently, train tracks run all over the United States and they run through places that's kind of odd. But train tracks don't really need much. They need a few feet of clearance and that's it. Bullet trains, on the other hand, need a massive amount of clearance because they can't take really sharp corners because of the speed they're going at. They would derail if the corner was too sharp. So they need more space in order to actually run than a regular train. Granted, the speed at which they go kind of outweighs all the disadvantages of them at the same time. But how are we gonna implement this? Well, we're gonna look into a little handbook of sci-fi and see exactly how we're gonna implement this. We're gonna make those trains levitate. And I don't mean like how bullet trains work, where they use a magna lock system to levitate the trains a couple of inches off the train tracks so that they can achieve that speed. I mean, we're gonna levitate the train tracks themselves. We're gonna run the train tracks about 20 feet high on platforms, just solid platforms that go straight up. Platforms are just gonna have a levitating track across them. This way, we can literally just put these beams anywhere we want them to and have the tracks levitating over them. It will take less time to build because the only thing we would actually be constructing is the actual platforms that the tracks levitate on which can be constructed anywhere and just moved into place the tracks themselves are literally going to be high powered magnets that are going to levitate on their own over the platform this will allow the trains to actually move around much more efficiently much faster it will eliminate the need for a lot of construction because instead of actually clearing the area the trains have to run through we will now just put platforms down of varying lengths to keep the track at the same height so we wouldn't actually have to clear an air for a train to actually run through it to keep the area level and we could run it through a forest without actually impacting the forest because in those cases we can make the platforms higher than tree levels and the trains will simply fly over the tracks so that would perfectly solve the problem of getting back and forth in the United States or any country without fossil fuel using magna lift bullet trains that levitate pretty high up, allowing them to be built freely, quickly, and very efficiently without disturbing the environment that they're being built on at the same time, which would also allow us to remove train tracks that are currently run into very unusual places and such as through mountains and stuff. We could eliminate those altogether because the magnet tracks would just go around the mountain. It wouldn't be a big deal because it wouldn't take that much time to just go around it. But then the problem comes in, how do we get from one place to another when we have to to travel over water well those trains can actually do that yes we don't have that technology yet but 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 it's almost here we we can do it we can do it it's we can still do it i mean i'm not the king of sci-fi for nothing we can do it i can envision it and we can do it first we're gonna start with the same tracks so we're not gonna drop massive stakes into the water to have these tracks levitate no instead we're gonna use flotation devices very small ones spaced sporadically throughout the tracks themselves these flotation devices won't keep the tracks on top of the water but they will actually keep the tracks just slightly under the water because if the tracks were kept on the water a wave could derail a train massive waves could alter the tracks themselves and any storm or hurricane could potentially destroy the track in that area so to reduce the damage that high winds and storms would do we're gonna suspend the tracks under the surface of the water this way the water itself acts as a barrier to the weather itself which will keep the tracks unexposed to the weather as much as possible so they would be relatively 
relatively safe under the water. Not perfectly safe, but a lot safer underwater than they would be above water. This would then allow us to run bullet trains on top of the actual water. The trains would levitate a few inches above the track, which would be slightly submerged in the water. This would allow the trains to be able to travel over water for vast distances at high speeds without the need for an actual boat that travels relatively slow in comparison to a regular train even. But in comparison to a bullet train, it's almost as fast as a plane. So you'd be able to get there in relatively short amounts of time. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Water is hard at high speeds. If you impact water at a very high speed, water becomes almost as hard as solid rock in a sense. So I know if you impact a wave going at 200 miles an hour, you'll probably just crush the train. But wait, I have a solution for that one also. And the solution comes straight out of my sci-fi book, okay? Each train is gonna have, instead of a light at the front of the train, it's gonna be equipped with a sonic cannon. The sonic cannon is gonna be pointed directly in front of the train. The sonic cannon will emit sound waves at high frequency, which will destabilize water. That way, right before we could hit any waves or any waves could come in contact with the train, the sonic cannon would basically push it out of the way. And because the sound moves so much faster than the train do, it will maintain a barrier in front of the train at all times. Thus allowing the train to go as fast as it needs to from place to place without worrying about running into a solid wall of water. In fact, with a sonic barrier right in front of the train and the train moving at the speed it is, this train can literally just punch a hole directly through a wave. Thus solving the problem of running into a wave at 200 miles an hour and just crushing the train on impact. See? I told you sci-fi fixes everything. Well, I didn't tell you that yet, but sci-fi fixes everything. And the last thing, we need to get net zero emissions of pollution. Well, if we did all these things, we would probably not really need any fossil fuels at that point anyway, so we'd be at net zero to begin with. Get it very but I'm not aiming for net zero, because come on, what kind of king only wants zero? You gotta be the best, right? So, I'm aiming for negative 100% carbon emissions by that time. So what are we gonna do to get that? We're gonna find a way to get rid of carbon emissions. Oh wait, we already have a way to get rid of carbon emissions that's not sci-fi. Kinda lame, but algae filters carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. It's where we get most of our oxygen from to breathe. Most of the oceans are filled with it. So how am I gonna make this nice and cool? Easy, we're gonna build giant algae buildings. Yes, you heard me. We're gonna turn dilapidated and forgotten skyscrapers or buildings just over two stories tall into algae farms. We're gonna completely revamp them. It's gonna be cheap because all we're really gonna do is just knock out all the, the walls that face outside and put in giant tanks inside of it filled with algae. We're gonna put some solar panels on top. It's not gonna look pretty but it's gonna do the job. The solar panels are gonna power some pumps. The same ones you have in your aquarium that pump air into the system. So the pumps are gonna pump air in through the system and that's all algae really needs. It's gonna need some dirt added to the water so the algae has something to grow off of. And you let the algae grow. The sun is gonna be the only source of light you need. It's gonna power the bubbles inside of the algae tanks and it's gonna give the algae the light it needs. And the awesome part about this is it's gonna simulate the same as an ocean current, which means when the sun sets, the algae will no longer have bubbles running in so the water will get still because the pumps are powered by solar power. Thus it'll create a small environment similar to the ocean which the algae can grow out of control in. and algae grows out of control pretty easily and that's what we want out of control algae grows inside of random buildings throughout the country especially random buildings that have been abandoned means clean air in that city or in that neighborhood that that building is in but I'm not done yet we're gonna clean the entire planet this way and how are we gonna do this well my plan also calls for circulation systems yes circulation systems these are systems giant fans basically not like giant windmill fans we're gonna use electrical currents around a circular system that's gonna create an ionic field which is gonna cause the air to constantly move by charging the air positively in one area and charging the air negatively in another area it'll cause the air to repel itself or attract itself to one by using this concept it would cause the air to continuously move Continuously moving air would create new wind currents that are not natural, but currents that we can control. So by controlling these new artificial wind currents closer to the ground, we could direct the air from polluted places over 
places that aren't as polluted or places that have almost no pollution to equalize the pollution level. We can direct polluted air over the oceans where they can be filtered by algae or we can direct them to places that have a high concentration of these algae farms and these buildings so that the air can be filtered as it flows through that area and into a different area. This would create a circulatory system that is completely artificial but this system would clean air from every place on the planet because it would circulate the air continuously throughout the entire. Added side effect to this would be less storms because with the air constantly being circulated and the currents in the air being artificially created, storms wouldn't get to generate because there would be no wind currents in those areas to generate storms. Thus, also solving the problem with massive hurricanes. Two birds, one stone. Sorry, Peter, but it's still two birds with one stone. So that brings me to the conclusion of my plan. We're gonna implement these things by the year 2532. Yes, it's gonna all be implemented and everything's gonna be perfect by then. Because as we all know, every time someone said the earth is gonna end, the earth definitely did not end. Because we are gonna be around by then. Because as we all know from past experiences, every time someone said the earth was gonna end on a specific date, it was 100% not true. Because I've lived through the end of the world quite a few times. I'm still here and I'm not radioactive. Well, maybe I'm not. Anyway, that brings me to the end of my conclusion. Leave your ideas if you have any that can beat mine. This is the King of Sci-Fi signing off. I guess that's a good way to end this video.